Hey, there's been inspiration hub here so there's been a new update to the checker node which was released today and this is version 1.0.2.7 so as it states on the page or on the release docs this is not a mandatory update however the team highly recommends that we install this so that we can benefit from the latest improvements so what I also want to show you is that they have this page where they state basically the differences between the non-mandatory updates and the mandatory updates. So for the non-mandatory updates, typically this command should be able to update the checker node for us. But however, for the mandatory updates, if your client is above version 1.0.2.4, the update should be automatically. If it's below that, then you have to do the updates manually. So this is going to really be a freestyle video. I just wanted to update my clients this evening and I realized that there might be other people who would be interested in how to do so. And that's why I'm going to record how I'm going to do the updates. Now, this would mean that I might face some challenges in the process. And that's basically what the essence of the video is that you see how we're going to address the challenges that we would have when trying to do the updates. Okay, so now I'm logged in into my VPS console and I'm going to basically start with the updates. So I believe I'm running the version 1.0.2.6 if I recall correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the application and I'm going to perform the update. Now to do so, so currently I do not have any screen running. So what I do is that after the update, I just close the, the client so you can see that I have no screen running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new screen that is called ATA. This is a new screen that we have created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter or I'm going to start the checker node application. Now to do so, I'm going to have to find out what the name of that folder was. So I'm just going to use the command LS and this basically would spit out the folders that I have. So currently it appears that I'm even not running version 1.0.26. I thought I was running 1.0.26, but it appears that I'm rather running 1.0.25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change into that folder. Now to change into the folder because the application is stored in the folder, right? So if you want to run the application, you have to enter that folder to run the application. Now to enter into the folder, you just use the command CD. So CD means change into the directory and I'm going to copy the name of the directory here. So the blue one is the directory, which we extracted or which I extracted when I was doing the installation. And the red one is a zip file that I downloaded. So here I didn't delete the older versions of the application. That's why you still see the version 1.0.24. So I've typed in CD. I'm going to highlight here to copy the folder name of the 1.0.25. So if you updated to 1.0.26, then most likely your folder would be 1.0.26. So I'm just trying to explain it so that you can also do it depending on whatever update that you have. So to paste input here, I'm just gonna right click and this would paste anything that I have in the clipboard. Then I'm gonna press enter. So now I have entered the directory that is running the checker notes client. So here I'm gonna type LS to find out what the name of the application is. So the ATA checker client application is what is called the ATA checker CLI. So to start the application, I'm just going to type sudo space full stop forward slash and I'm just going to type in the name that I have here. So this is the application that we want to start, right? I'm going to type in ATA checker CLI, right? I'm just going to press enter. Then now you see that the application has started. So when I run the command ATHIA version, let's see which application I'm running. Oh, so this is funny. So it appears that I'm running somehow. Ah, I think I see what happened. So this is what I said. It's going to be a freestyle video. So I had already manually installed the checkup version 1.0.25, but with the version that was released, which was the checkup node version 1.0.26, the checker clients were updated automatically. So that's why I didn't have to download the file. That's why I didn't see the file there, but this is all good. So currently we are inside the application. You can see that I'm running the checker node 1.0.26. Now to do the updates, typically we should be able to use the command ATA update, right? So let's see if this is going to work. If it works, then the video is going to be very short. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to show you how we can have a work around this. It's going to enter this command. And then it tells me that version 1.0. So you can see here version 1.0.2.7 is available. Press yes to continue. I'm going to type Y. And then you can see that it didn't work. So I'm not the only one who is having this problem. So I also read on this code that it's a lot of users are having this problem as well. So that means that we're going to have to unfortunately do the updates manually. Now to do the updates, I'm going to first have to close the checker client's application. So currently I'm running this in a screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type control A and D to minimize the screen. So if you remember control A, D basically minimizes the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the screen that is running or that was running the checker node client. And to do so, I'm going to use the command screen space minus xs space. 
and I'm gonna have to find the screen ID. So in my case, the screen ID is what you see here, five four five seven five eight. So if you do not know what the screen ID is, you can also use a command screen space minus ls, and this would basically tell you what the screen ID is. Now to kill the screen, you can use a command screen minus x x xs. That's quite a funny word to mention. Space. Then you put in the screen ID, which is going to be five four five seven five eight then space and then just type quits right and this will quit the screen now in the case in my case for instance where i have only one screen that is working i can basically use the command p kill screen and this would kill all the screen sessions that are running so if i use the command screen space minus ls you see that i do not have any screen that is running i hope i'm not flattering you with so many commands i just want you to understand the logic behind the commands that we are using now to do the manual updates what we used to do was to come to the atr dashboard click on download checker clients and then when you right click we used to have this copy link but we do not have it anymore so what we're gonna have to do is to first download the clients so this is a bit of a workaround unfortunately the w gets command is not working and that's why we have to do it this way so first i'm just going to download the application by clicking here to download the application so now the application is downloaded now what we're going to do now is because the wget command is unfortunately not working now we're going to have to connect to our vps server using a different application so in my case i'm using filezilla filezilla is a free application that you can download so i'm also going to provide you the link to download filezilla in the description section you can just click on this and you will download the application now what you have to do here is to put in the ip address of your vps server the username that you use to log in into the VPS server, most of the time is root. If you have a different username, just put it there and you're going to put a password to your server. So I've put in the IP address of my VPS server. The username of my VPS is root and I've also put in the password. And for the ports, just put in the number 22 and then just click quick connect. So now you see that we are connected to my VPS. So basically all the files that you see here are the files that I are currently on my vps if you remember we had a folder which was called a checker clients 1.0.25 1.0.24 and stuff like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag the file that i downloaded into the vps server now this is very easy to do just come to the folder where you downloaded the file click on the folder and just drag and drop the folder into the vps server right and then you see here that the status indicator that the file has been transferred so now the file is transferred if you do not want to use the drag and drop you can also basically try to access the folder from the left section here and just click and drag it into the vps server so here when you're dragging be careful that you don't drag into a folder otherwise you wouldn't find it just drag it outside a folder so that you can easily find this on the vps server so now we have successfully extra so now we have successfully dragged the file onto the vps server now we're going to go into the console and we're going to continue the update so now i'm back into the console what we're going to do is for instance if i type the command ls we should now see the new file that i put onto the server as you can see this is the file that i downloaded recently and uploaded onto the server so the file is 1.0.2.7 now what we're going to do first is we have to extract this file that we downloaded so when you download the file please do not unzip the file you can basically unzip the file directly into the console now to unzip the file, we're going to use the command tar space minus xvf space. Copy the file name here. So in Putty, whenever you write, you highlight, it basically copies whatever you highlight. Come into wherever the text prompt is, right click, and this would basically paste in the command. And then here, I'm just going to press enter. So what this is going to do is it's going to extract the file that we, don't, we just put onto the server. Now, what I want to do now is now we have extracted the file. So when I type the command ls, you would see that I have, it looks a bit too much here. Maybe let me clear the screen a little bit so that it gets a bit cleaner. I'm going to type the command ls. And then you see that we have, this is the file that was unzipped. This is what we put onto the server. So I got a bit confused the first time that I used the command ls because I thought the file name would be called like we have here for the older versions, a license 1.0.24. But it appears that for the new one that it did, the file is just called ATA CLI Linux. This is this is this could be a bit confusing because I was trying to look for where the file that was extracted is, but I couldn't find it and I realized that this is the file that is called ATA Chica 
CLI. So how I found out this is that when I came back to my FileZilla, I saw that there's a new folder that is created and the date of the folder was basically today. And that was the only way I was able to find out that that is the new file that was downloaded. Now to install the application, what we're going to do now is to create a new screen and we're going to call the screen ATA. So screen minus S ATA and then just press enter. And then here we're going to run the application. So if you type LS, for instance, you see that we have this folder that we downloaded. So we're going to have to change into this directory to, to run the application. Now to change into the directory is going to be CD space. Then we're going to highlight the name of the folder here. We're going to come to the command prompt and we're going to paste it. So basically you can also type the name of the folder, but sometimes you have Linux could kind of be a bit case sensitive. And that's why I prefer to just copy and paste the command. Now here you're going to press enter to enter the folder. So when you enter the folder, you see that the command prompt used to be just ending with this, but now the command prompt also has the folder name, which means that we have entered that folder. Now, if you want to see the contents of the folder, just type LS and then you see that we have the file here. Now to perform the updates, we're going to have to first install the command install.sh. Now apologies, I'm going to run this. Uh, that's a wrong command. The command would be sudo space full stop forward slash install.sh and then press enter. And this would basically install the new service and the updates for the newer version that was just released. So now this is done. The service is installed. What we're going to do now is to reload the system and service manager. Now to do so, just use the command sudo system control daemon daemon or whatever it is minus reload and just press enter. So now this has restarted the services. Now what I'm going to do now is to start the application. Now to do so, I'm going to clear the screen just to make it a bit cleaner. And then I'm going to type the command ls to find out what the name of the checker client is. So as you can see here, the checker client application is called ATA checker CLI. So here, just put in the command sudo space full stop forward slash and then ATA checker CLI. You could also, like I said, you can also just copy and paste the command here and then just press enter. And then now you see that the application has started. So here it looks like everything was successful. It has automatically detected my wallet. Now let's check to see if the version was correct. So to do so, just type the command A here, version and press enter. And then you can see that I'm running version 1.0.2.7. So we have been able to successfully update our node. Now, if I want to check to see if everything is working, just use the command A here, license summary. And then let's see what the states are. So currently this looks very good. I have one license. My license is checking, which is pretty good. I do not have anything that is offline, so it means that we did a good job. Now, at this point, you can basically close the screen. So you can use Control C. This would basically kill the checker client application, and then you can close the console. Alternatively, what you can also do is you just press the command Control A, leave the keyboard, and then press D, like you know, to basically uh, minimize the screen. And then when you are out, you can basically use the command P, P, P kill screen. And this would basically kill the screen for you. You can all, you can leave the screen opened. You can leave the screen closed. And because the checkout node is running as a service, you do not need to have the clients running all the time. Right? So at this point, you can either decide to leave the screen open or to kill the screen. So that's it about how to update a client to the checkout node 1.0.2.7. So I know it wasn't the easiest video because like I said, I couldn't prepare, but I think it was good that it helped you also to hopefully to be able to understand all the commands that we used and for you to be able to update your clients yourself as well. If you have any questions, just put this in the comment section and I'll be very, very happy to help you out. Or you can also come to the ATA Discord there and we'll be also extremely happy to help you out. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.